On the banks of the Kalka River, thousands of Rus were killed by the Mongols. The hunters had become the hunted. But in the years leading up to this Mongol raid in the west, Genghis Khan had been focusing his attacks on the east and the Qin dynasty of northern China. Controlling wealthy lands and trade routes, Qin cities overflowed with riches. In 1210, the Qin's new ruler, seeing Genghis Khan as a threat, demanded that he swear loyalty to him. Genghis Khan refused. To the Qin, this defiance was a declaration of war. The Qin had a huge army, and their territory was protected by vast fortifications. Known today as the Great Wall. The Mongols had never faced a more formidable enemy. Genghis Khan knew the only way to defeat the Qin would be to take their heavily defended capital city, Zhongdu, on the other side of the Great Wall. Genghis Khan would be committing his people to a long, hard war. Would the rewards be worth the cost? For answers, he looked to the gods. Climbing a sacred mountain, he prayed to the eternal sky. After four days, he received his answer. The Mongols would be victorious. With divine reassurance, the Mongol army set out across the steppe. They must break through the Great Wall to destroy the Qin dynasty and further expand the Mongol Empire. The Qin fortress of Shang Jaku blocked Genghis Khan's path to the Great Wall. Seeing the strength of the defenses at the front of the fortress, Genghis Khan dispatched his scouts to seek out an alternate approach. Mongol warfare relied heavily on the mobility of mounted scouts. They could travel at high speed explore the terrain, and gather information on enemy weaknesses. The Khan's swift riders advanced up the steep mountain, discovering a hidden path above the Qin fortress. The Qin had deployed patrols on the mountain above their fortress, but the Mongol scouts, although isolated from their army, had the advantage of speed. The Mongol riders discovered an embankment leading to the back of the fortress. Here they found far fewer Qin defenses than at the front. Learning of the weak defenses at the back of the fortress, 
Genghis Khan saw his opportunity to attack. The Mongols began their ride to battle. If the Mongols took the fortress, they could freely advance on the Great Wall. the enemy building, claiming valuable spoils from the ruins. sacked the fortress of Shang Jaku, ensuring that they would not be attacked from behind as they advanced on the Great Wall. With the Qin fortress posing no further threat, Genghis Khan called on his people to bring in their mobile camp. Next, the Mongols needed a base close to the Great Wall. They targeted the Qin village of Yangcheng. Yeah. 
能。Hearing of the Mongol advance, nearby Qin villages began sending attacks, hoping to weaken Genghis Khan's army. By destroying the Qin village, the Mongols had stopped the attacks from its garrison. I 
Chong fell to the Mongols, and nothing now stood between Genghis Khan and the Great Wall. It was time to face the Qin head-on at the Great Mountain Pass at Juyong. In order for Genghis Khan's assault to go as planned, he would need to move his base closer to the Great Wall. Fortunately, the Mongols specialized in the construction of mobile camps and could easily pack their holdings and move to a new location. I'm the 
stormed the Great Wall. The formidable barricade, thought insurmountable, finally bent to the will of Genghis Khan. keep at Juyong Pass burned to the ground, giving the Mongols a secure route into the heart of Qin territory. As pillars of smoke billowed from the mountain pass, Genghis Khan charged forward into new lands and on to his ultimate goal, the wealthy Qin capital of Zhongdu.